A projectile is shot with a speed of 60 meters per second from the top of a 100 meter high cliff. At what speed does the projectile strike the ground below? In this problem, it does not mention anything like friction, air resistance, or heat produced, so we are going to ignore all of those. This means there is no non-conservative forces doing work, because while the projectile is in the air, the only force that acts on the projectile is the conservative gravitational force mg. There is no work done by any non-conservative forces, so the delta E is zero. So the system's initial mechanical energy equals to the final mechanical energy. The initial is the moment after the projectile is shot. The projectile is moving at 60 meters per second, so there is 1 half mv squared. The speed is 60. Now, it is also up high. If I choose this is the ground, then the height at the beginning is 100 meters. So there is mgy. So the mg and the y, the height is 100 meters. At the end, that will be the moment before it hits the ground. The projectile is moving. We don't know the speed. We're looking for that speed. The moment before it hits the ground, even though it's not touching the ground yet, it is right over there. So the mgy is 0. So every single term has the mass. We can cancel the mass. So if we do this calculation, plugging in the g is 10, we would have the speed that is the square root of 5600, and it's 75 meters per second. And uh, it's good. The number is more than 60 because if it lands below, the speed over here should be more than 60 because we are ignoring the air resistance. Of course, we used to do projectile motion problems like this in kinematics. If we use kinematics to find the final speed, we would need to know the initial angle over here so we can find the horizontal and the vertical components of the initial velocity. And then we would have to separate the horizontal side and the vertical side. And to find the landing speed, we will need to find the final velocity in the horizontal and the vertical side, and then use Pythagorean theorem to find the speed. Remember, if you have a horizontal component of the velocity and the vertical component of the velocity, we have to add them together by making this rectangle, and the diagonal is the sum and the speed is the magnitude of the total velocity, this diagonal. So we can use Pythagorean theorem. The speed is the square root of vx squared plus vy squared. So the conservation of energy method is a lot quicker. Besides, without the angle being given, we do not have enough information to use kinematics. Of course, this also means the angle does not matter. As long as the projectile is shot at 60 meters per second, no matter the angle, even if it's shot at an angle below the horizontal, the landing speed will be the same, 75 meters per second. Now, if I ask you to find the maximum height reached by this projectile, I will have to give you the angle, because obviously different angles will give me different heights. So let's say the angle here is 37 degrees above the horizontal. See if you can find this uh, maximum height. There are at least two different methods we can use, kinematics and uh, conservation of energy. Since we're studying the work and energy unit, I will use conservation of energy. Again, there is no friction or air resistance to take energy away, so the mechanical energy stays the same. So initially, right after the projectile is shot, it has uh, the same amount of energy. 1 half m times 60 squared plus uh, mgy. Of course, I can also use this 
because they are the same amount. Which means that after the projectile is shot, the total mechanical energy of the system is the same everywhere throughout all these different positions. So the energy here and there and there, they are all the same. So you, if you want, you can plug in the 75 over here and use that number here. Now, in this particular case, the final position is at the maximum height. Is there kinetic energy at the maximum height? Now, the maximum height has a zero velocity only in the vertical direction. There's still this uh, horizontal velocity. If you remember for projectile motion, the horizontal side has a constant velocity motion. So whatever initial horizontal velocity the projectile has, it has that same horizontal velocity the entire time. So at the maximum height, there is no vertical velocity, but there is still that same horizontal velocity as the initial. So we have to find the horizontal component of the initial velocity. So if you make a rectangle over here, this horizontal velocity is adjacent to the angle, so it's the cosine component. So the velocity up there is the same as that one, 60 times the cosine 37 degrees. And so 1 half mv squared, oh, I got it wrong, this is the equal sign. So this is equal to the final kinetic energy. Over there, of course, it's up high, and we're looking for the height. So there is mgy, and we're looking for that y. Again, the mass cancels. And if you carry out the calculations, you will get the y equals to 165 meters. And that's 165 meters above this ground right here. And uh, since the cliff is 100 meters high, that means uh, it's uh, 65 meters above the top of the cliff.